case you didn't know, you are at 1100 Ocean uh, Mercy Housing uh, property. So on behalf of the Mercy Housing California Board of Directors and also the Bernal Heights Board and staff and Rachel and on behalf of Doug, um, and we, uh, my name is Jennifer Dolan. Uh, Doug apologizes for not being here, uh, but we, we managed to bring Jane Graff in uh, from Denver, so we're, we're lucky to have Jane here. Um, she's our, our president CEO at Mercy Housing. So welcome to Jane, board members, um, and our staff. Thank you for being here and our honored guests. So welcome, he, welcome today. Uh, this was a great project, uh, mostly because we were able to partner with so many different um, organizations and agencies, most uh, particularly the Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center uh, that helped create this affordable housing for families and youth uh, in this absolutely fabulous, transit-rich Ingleside neighborhood. Uh, you can't get better located in this uh, San Francisco and having City College here. We're just also excited to welcome 25 transitional age youth uh, to the property, which is a, uh, a, a great initiative that the city took on many uh, years ago and that we were able to accommodate that here and incorporate uh, this youth, these youth into these families that uh, we're, we're very excited to, to, have, them, to have them with us. Um, so I actually would love to uh, just get our speakers up here and, and make sure we're all not going to be too hot. Can we believe it's sunny? here in Ingleside, right? This is like absolutely amazing that we're, we're not sitting here and freezing in, in, in the fog today. So, um, so let's, let's bring our speakers up. So I'm gonna invite Olson Lee um, to, to come up to the podium first. So thanks, Olson. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, on behalf of Mayor Lee, Mayor Lee couldn't be here today, so I'm a, I'm a fill-in for uh, the mayor. Um, he was signing the city's budget, and it's a budget, uh, again, that uh, I'm talking about the shared prosperity, and this is clearly one of the things that the mayor would like to do more of. Um, you know, the whole notion of creating affordable housing in this city is such an important issue at this time. And it's important not just because of the need for general housing, but it's important to serve everybody, to serve the 100%. And I think uh, this, the mayor would be very, very proud of the fact that this development is serving transitional age youth um, to give those, those individuals a chance to succeed. Um, and and, and um, the mayor has committed the office to produce more transitional age youth housing in the future. Um, he has a, you know, obviously he has a, a housing uh, uh, plan that will produce basically double the amount of affordable housing um, that the, uh, the mayor's office of housing has traditionally built um, uh, over the next five years. And an important part of d being able to do this kind of housing one is have wonderful partners. And so uh, you will hear from a whole village of people because it in, indeed takes a whole village to do this kind of work, but it also takes money. And so, you know, clearly, you know, the mayor and the board of supervisors and, and Supervisor Yu is here and a supporter of the, um, the housing bond that's going on the ballot in November. That will enable us to build more developments like this. Um, you know, and, and leverage additional funds, whether it's from, you know, the state, um, and whether it's from our partners at B of A, um, we all do this together, and, and, and we need the resources to do it, um, and, and the bond will be a part of that. So on behalf of the mayor, I'd like to congratulate all the parties who uh, participated in this, and I specifically wanted to thank a few people from the city side, because they don't all, often get thanked um, for their work including the folks from um, SFMTA and management, Jason Gallegos, John Katz, uh, the OEWD staff, uh, specifically Lisa Pagan, uh, the Mo CD staff, uh, Teresa Yanga, Faith uh, Kilpatrick, and Romero, and Kevin Kitchenkam, um, and, and, and to all the other folks in the city and the mayor's office who all work together to try to make this happen. Congratulations to all.
later. Okay. Speakers, you get a gift. We just noticed the gift, so we want to make sure. Amy and I were coordinating, so after you speak, get a gift. <laughs> Olson will get you your gift, don't worry. <laughs> um, so thank you, Olson. Thank you for those uh, kind words. And of course, we all, uh, I, I actually was fortunate enough to work on this project before transitioning into a new role at Mercy Housing. So I was able to work with a lot of the staff that uh, Olson mentioned and just want to say thank you. Um, it, it was a pleasure working with all of them and, and it's, uh, it was uh, good to have all those partners and, and lots of meetings to figure out a lot in, in terms of this, this area and this space. So um, thank you. Uh, so next up is our supervisor from District 7 from the City and County of San Francisco, Norman Yee. Uh, we're welcoming here and his, his office and everybody in this area have been very instrumental in, in bringing uh, this project to fruition. It's been a project that's been talked about for maybe 15 plus years. Um, so it's, it's been part of the Ocean Avenue plan. Uh, there have been a lot of community work around how to uh, look at this area adjacent to the, to the bus area, City College, and really how to figure out how to reconnect um, the different parts of the neighborhood, and, and this being one of sort of the central or, or key points in that plan. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have uh, Norman Yee here today, and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Um, whether you know or not, this is District 7. We're right at the edge of District 7. If you walk 100 meters that way across the street, you're out of District 7. So I am so happy to say that I had a choice today to celebrate my birthday. Either be at City Hall signing our new budget or coming here to welcome the people here. And guess what I chose? <laughs> well, the secret is, this is much closer to my home than City Hall. <laughs> I'm, I actually, it's been really interesting for me to see this being developed and for people to move in uh, through the last few months. Because in the evenings, when I wanted, want to take a little longer walk, I would go around, come down feeling, and I walk around this loop and go to ocean and back up to my home. And I was seeing, I was mentioning uh, as I was taking the tour of a few, few of the units, I said, yeah, I kept on seeing more and more lights in the last few, few months uh, as people moved in. And, and I was envying like, what's in here? What's in here? Because I, I haven't seen it yet. So today I had an opportunity to see if um, one of the studios uh, where one of the uh, Tay occupants uh, allowed us in, and I also saw a three, three bedroom. And wow, I want to move here. <laughs> I mean, this is really a beautiful, I mean, uh, kudos for the architect uh, that put this together because this is amazing. I didn't think you could put so much stuff in one parcel of property. So not only am I proud as a city rep that we're building affordable housing and targeting some of the housing for our transitional youth, but for somebody to come here in this district in the west side of the town and say we have affordable housing is really a big deal. There's so few units for affordable housing being built right now for uh, the west side. And I think we need to share the wealth here in, in regards to city college, in regards to the transit. And uh, this whole, whole area is being developed. You could walk down the street, go, to, go shopping for food uh, in a very nice uh, supermarket. Um, the, the front here will also be developed to be a community plaza. And that's gonna be a great, because I know the Ocean Avenue Association has been working on that concept for years. And they have a lot of plans in terms of how to utilize it. They wanna bring a farmer's market right out there. Um, if if um, you, before that's built, what's happening is I've worked with other 
uh, city departments. There's a library right down the street, Ingleside Library. I think I'm pointing in the right direction. Ingleside Library. And I've worked with four different departments to build out outdoor space that's right next to the library so people could go there and relax and read and, and just enjoy the sunny days. Um, by the way, we do have sunny days here once in a while. <laughs> Come on, it's not always foggy. But I'm, I'm real, again, I just want to say I'm real proud to be a representative of this district and that you're here. That we're building other affordable uh, units right down the street now. And I've just seen, I'm just thrilled with what's happening on Ocean Avenue. And welcome, everybody. And I want to th also thank this, the uh, city family and in, in how they've taken this project and work, working with the partners at Bernal Heights and also Mercy Housing. Uh, Mercy Housing, as you know, is a national group that's just known throughout um, the United States. Um, I know some of the leadership there, and um, I, I couldn't think of a uh, better two organization to really be a partner in all this. Thank you very much. Thank you for those kind words. I also just want to say, <laughs> Amy, Amy my, my assistant, thank you, Amy. Um, I also just want to say th uh, thank you to the Ocean Avenue, C uh, CBD, the Ocean Avenue Neighborhood Association, the District 7 uh, Democratic Council, who are all part of the neighborhood process and continue to support us as we look for uh, retail commercial uh, tenants for our ground floor retail. So we're not completely done yet. We're still working uh, with the community to, to, to sort of complete of uh, the Ocean Avenue uh, streetscape and, and the retail. So thanks to all of them, and uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Yee, for those kind words. Um, I'd love to bring up now Rachel Abora. Rachel is the Executive Director of Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center. Uh, Rachel's team was uh, part of the uh, process. Uh, we are and continue to be partners on this project. And uh, so we have now a long-term uh, relationship, and uh, we've managed to get through construction, and, and now we're, we're getting uh, used to each other as we uh, manage, manage the property. So I uh, wanted to welcome uh, Rachel. Magandang tanghali sa inyong lahat at maligayang pagpupunyagi dito sa pagbubukas ng 1100 Ocean. Uh, that means... Hi, everyone. No. Um, a beautiful afternoon to everyone and a wonderful and joyful uh, opening of 1100 Ocean. You know, um, over a decade ago, as was mentioned, this site was merely an idea. And it grew into a whisper. And it grew into various conversations, conferences, meetings, lots of meetings, uh, and planning. And now we have a beautiful building um, that is the product of the hundreds of hours of effort by our community members, by our staff, our partners, and the city. It's really but a drop in the bucket in the ever-increasing challenge of keeping, and working, um, keeping our working families here in San Francisco. I'm proud, I'm proud to stand here with you today knowing that we all work together so that the many families, the working families, the children, the transitional aged youth, now have a place called home. And I'm prouder even that this is but one concrete way that you have helped and that we have, we have all worked together um, in helping Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center fulfill our mission of building a just and equitable community for all. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Thanks, everyone. And again, a joyful welcome opening of 1100 Ocean. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, building would not be here without the work of uh, a lot of partnerships, and that includes the city family, uh, the partnership between BHNC and Mercy, and of course, um, our private partners as well. And so I'm pleased to welcome to the podium Gabriel Spire from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Well, thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, so, you know, there's something to be said about perseverance for the ability to consistently drive ahead, even though there may be setbacks, even though the goals may change, even though there may be plenty of challenges. Now, of course, for me, there's something to be said about a lot of things, right? About the, the funding and the teamwork that Olson mentioned. But to me, what this project really represents is the perseverance that, that Rachel spoke about. 
because we still have in our files back at Bank of America the 2003 proposal for this project as part of the Bank of America Low Income Housing Challenge. And that really says something from 2003 till today. I think this project really says a lot about the people who worked very hard and at great lengths for this, pro for this project to become a reality, including many seated departments, supporting politicians, community partners, the state of California, TWICE, CalHFA, and HCD, two developers, Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center and Mercy Housing. But you know, also, thinking about perseverance, I think there's something to be said about the perseverance of the people who will live here at 1100 Ocean, like the ones you're gonna hear from today, in most of whom, and I wanna say particularly at the transition age youth, who at times probably had to dig down very deep and persevere under very difficult circumstances to make it here today. And hopefully the perseverance of those that worked so hard to create this wonderful property will uh, inspire others that their dreams can become a reality also. I, I know it does for me. So as for Bank of America, we're very pleased to provide the $19.5 million construction loan and the $14 million tax credit equity investment for the uh, development of uh, 1100 Ocean. It's part of our $1.5 trillion 10-year commitment to community development. Thank you very much. So to bring the transitional age youth uh, required another partnership with the city, and that was with our human services agency. Um, I believe that Trent Rohr is not able to be here today. I don't know if there's anybody else from the human service agency who wants to come up and speak on his behalf. You're welcome to join me here at the podium if there is, but if anybody? No? Okay. Well, then I will do it. Um, I have to say that we were uh, very lucky uh, to once again, have a, a strong partnership uh, with the Human Services Agency because you know nothing nothing is easy, and uh, trying to figure out how to find a, a subsidy for for the residents to be able to live here, making sure that we sort of understand all the implications about having transitional age youth at a property that with tax credits. Uh, so to be able to do that with the Human Services Agency was great. Uh, we worked uh, directly with Cindy Ward as well as Ali uh, Schlegeter. I hope I said your name correctly, if not, sorry. Um, anyway, thank you, Cindy and Allie, uh, for all of your um, help and assistance uh, during this process. And um, you brought in a, a certain um, perspective that was very helpful um, in design as well as, as we were creating uh, the program. And so without that knowledge, it, it, it does make, it, it made it a much more richer uh, project. So thank you very much uh, for that. All right, so we'll move on to some of our other uh, gracious and uh, uh, funders. Uh, today we have uh, the California Department of Housing and Community Development uh, representative Evan Gerbending here, and uh, she's going to just say a couple of words on behalf of uh, Susan Riggs, their executive director. So thank you. Thanks, Evan. It's uh, our headquarters for HCD are in Sacramento, so. Um, it's supposed to be 106 degrees there today, so I'm extra happy to be here. Um, thank you so much for having HCD at this transformative and heartwarming celebration. We're proud to have funded 2.9 million from our multifamily housing program and an additional 4.3 million specifically for young adults who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. There's no question that affordable housing stabilizes families. There are many studies that prove that fact. But for young people, especially those at risk, safe, affordable, and stable housing is absolutely imperative. Without safe and stable housing, like the homes provided here, uh, families and students tend to uh, move frequently and um, this disrupts their educations, making a big impact on their lives. Providing a home base, community partners like many of us here, leverage coordinating services and lift up entire neighborhoods. 
At HCD, we often talk about connecting the dots. Those three words come up again and again because there are clear connections between housing and education, housing and health, um, transportation, climate change, the economy. So when you improve and stabilize housing, you improve and stabilize lives. It means transforming these communities, making them safer, healthier, and friendlier. This is why we come to work each day, to come and to see developments like these come to fruition. It's clear that HCD's investment is being well spent, and it's also clear that the individuals who are able to live here may not have large bank accounts, but they're very fortunate to live here, and they are rich in that regard. So thank you again for having HCD, and congratulations. And another state partner is the California Housing Finance Agency, and I'm going to invite Tony Surditch uh, to join us, join me at the podium. Thank you. So yeah, at the California Housing Finance Agency, um, you know we're we're very happy to be invited. We we uh, we're not as big of a financial partner as HCD or B of A, but we 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 try to get involved in projects like this because we know how much they mean to the community. Um, this project is, you know, it's beautiful, it's great. I didn't actually get on the tour like uh, Supervisor Yee did, but uh, it, it's wonderful. Um, and, and we're very proud that we uh, were able to play a part in uh, helping develop it through our Mental Health Services Act program. Um, and especially with all the other partners, Financial, uh, Mercy, and, and all the developers and architects who helped make this happen. Um, you know, without the contributions of everyone, we wouldn't all be here today. Um, so on behalf of the College of A staff, especially, especially Deborah Starbuck, who runs our MHSA program, and I mentioned, with, talked with Jennifer earlier about uh, how, how knowledgeable and helpful she, she can be, um, we're, we're honored that so many families and transitional age youth uh, will be able to prosper here with, uh, with stable housing in this project. Um, and so I want to congratulate Mercy Housing and all of the partners on the vision and dedication that it took to create 1100 Ocean Avenue. Thank you. Great. So we have one more speaker. Before I bring our uh, resident speaker up, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to take, uh, thank a couple of people. Um, I'd actually like mostly to thank um, Cahill and Herman Colliver Locus for their teamwork during this process. It was, uh, it was a, a great fun, fun meetings. Uh, we had a great time. But we'll also have to apologize to you because I have never seen so many project managers on one project. <laughs> and I, I remember everybody thinking, Look, there's another project manager? And of course, there are two teams. So um, I want to specifically and thank uh, all the project managers. So all the project managers, you must stand up. Um, and those include William Ho, Faith Kirkpatrick, Ramey Dare, Kevin Kitchingham, did I miss any? Myself. <laughs> and then Ilea, who's taken up the rear. <laughs> oh, Amy Beinhart. I think I got everybody, right? So th that's, that's six, right? Six project managers that Herman Colliver, Locus, and Cahill had to work with during the time of, of this project, which in and itself, you, don't, you never sign up for that, right? It's, it's hard enough to just build a building, but then to have six uh, different project managers and opinions and thoughts. You know, I, I can't believe we actually made a building here with all of those different varying opinions and um, ideas. So thanks to you all and to all your staff for, for that energy. Thank you to all the project managers managers on this deal and the assistance and everybody who goes behind that you know there's a lot of people on staff that that make that work uh, possible for the project managers so on, on behalf of all of them uh, uh, Jim, thank you all right so who else do I, I yes I uh, just want to make sure I didn't forget anybody before I, I hand over the mic let's see I the, the other, yeah, okay, yep. Um, the, the other group I also just wanted to mention that were in part of this, uh, my initial comments was the Department of Public Health. 
Uh, we also had a great uh, partnership with them uh, as well and continue to do so. Uh, the team of Annette, Marlo, and, and Carrie, uh, thank you. I don't, I don't know if you guys are here, but all for all of your help as well. Um, lastly, uh, it always it always comes down to the uh, oh no wait wait one more one more uh, thank you which is uh, I have to thank community economics. Uh, not often do our financial consultants get uh, thanked, um, but in this particular case, I, I do want to say thanks to Kevin Knutson. I don't know if he's here today, uh, but you all can go back and, and say something to him. But when I worked on this project, he's like, this, this is actually not one project. This is three projects in one. And we had to sort of kind of keep track of uh, all the different types of uh, financing and, it, and um, you know, how it all worked in the 15 year and keeping all the lenders. So, Kevin uh, stayed very cool throughout this entire process, so I just want to make sure also he had to work with six diff different people through this process. So want to want to thank him for his patience and, and working with all of the different partners to make that possible. Um, and then, oh yeah, a little clap for Kevin. Yes, thank you. And then we, we never do any favors to our, our, our lease up team. Right, because we're we're always uh, a little bit behind schedule. Not, we weren't too bad on this one, but we're, there are always a, a little things, and we always tell them, oh, "Don't worry, you'll you'll have uh, lots of time to to lease up." And of course, um, all sorts of curveballs are always thrown th thrown their way. Um, so I just want to make sure that they know how much we appreciate it. That's the Mercy Housing uh, Property Management team, and and thank you for all of your work and continued uh, success here and so Barbara Crane if all your team and and coordinating all that so thank you thank you very much all right so this is I think mostly everybody's favorite part of the um, the event is when we all have a chance to uh, get to know a little bit about some of the people who who live in this building and so it's my honor to uh, welcome uh, Luz Hernandez to the podium. She is now um, so proud part of the Bernal and Mercy family and uh, it's my, um, I think you guys in for a real treat, she's a, a very special lady and she uh, moved here um, and uh, is one of our residents. I think she's actually one of the residents who's opening up her home today. Uh, so Luz, why don't you come up? So this is her first time. I told her you all were very friendly, so lots of smiles. <laughs> uh, and here we go, Lewis. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Luis Hernandez. <laughs> My name is Luis Hernandez, and I am from Honduras. I'm 23 years old. I immigrated to this country with my dad when I was 14 years old. When I come here, I started working in two jobs. After a year, my dad decided to go back to Honduras. He led me here alone. I entered in the foster system when I was 16 years old, and it was when I started going to school. I emancipated from the foster care system a few years ago, and although I've been surviving, I have also been on the verge of being homeless. Before leaving in this apartment, I used to live in a house with a bad environment. People who used drugs and didn't have any purpose in life. It was really hard for me to keep going in school and living in that conditions. <clears throat> My grades went down with a GPA of 1.7. I always cry every morning before going to school. My living situations impacts my educational goals a lot. When I received the notice that I was selected to live in this apartment, it was the best day of my life. My life changed completely. Now I live in a safe and good environment where I can focus in school and finish my career. Thanks to this place, now my grades got better. Now I am in the honor program with a GPA of 4.0. And I am grad <laughs> And I graduated from college next spring in 2016. 
with an AS and liberal arts with an emphasis in social and behavior science. I also transferred to UC Berkeley in fall 2016. Now I'm not worried about if I will be homeless no more because now I have this place. I don't have my family with me, but I have many people who are supporting me to achieve my goals. I'm really ten thankful to God and, ten and thanks to Mercy Housing for giving the opportunity to have a stable place to achieve my goals and dreams. I really feel blessed to live in this apartment. Thank you. And I'd like to invite up another resident speaker, Karen Henriquez. Same rules apply, smiles. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is Karen Henriquez. I am a resident to this um, beautiful apartment building. Um, I was born and raised in San Francisco. What Mercy has done for me is gave me an opportunity to continue to live in San Francisco, the city that I love. Um, with rent as high as $4,000 for two bedrooms, it is impossible for working natives in SF to live in the city that they just adore. Um, the things I like about Mercy Housing is that it's a, it's a green building, meaning my PG&E bill is under $25. Um, the staff is progressive, caring, and attentive. They tried their best to get me in here. 1100 Ocean is located near transportation, colleges, and close to shopping malls. I also work for Mercy, where I get the opportunity to assist people who have the same similar or worse situations than me, so I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful that Mercy has given me opportunity to feel independent, to continue to live in the city where I don't have to struggle to transport from other counties to here. Um, and my son gets a beautiful view and he gets a place to play for once, you know? So I'm glad that we're able to live in a community. Thank you. So I, for one, am really delighted that Doug isn't here today, because then I don't have to fight with him for the microphone, because as you can see, he's next on the list. Um, but uh, I'm going to pinch hit for Doug, and I'm Jane, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Jane Graff, and I once was the president of Mercy Housing California, which is what Doug is currently. I'm now the president and CEO of Mercy Housing nationally, and I am delighted to be here today. Um, I don't get a chance to do this very often anymore, and so it's really a pleasure. Um, I was told by Olson, and I think this is, and you know, it's like, my, sometimes I think my brain is a total fog, that this development, this site, we were th that the city started working on this site, and Bernal actually started working on this site in 1992, and this went up for a, for a vote, and it was voted down. And then, and it was supposed to be senior housing. And then we started all over again. So talk about perseverance. Uh, and, and I have to say, um, as much as that is a bad thing to vote down affordable housing for seniors ever, um, I am so delighted that we got to wait around for this because <laughs> this is really a terrific um, family site and being able to combine it with transitional youth it just doesn't get any better than that with transit and and city college and I mean there's everything is right at your fingertips so I was telling people earlier uh, today it's you know this is like Nirvana it really doesn't get much better than this so I, I want to thank um, in particular uh, Bob Herman and Susie Colliver and the team at Herman Colliver Locust because you guys have been on this for a really long time and this really is a beautiful building and it will make a difference in so many people's lives and of course Cahill Contractors, Chuck Pally, they are our longtime uh, partners and have been working with Mercy Housing um, and back in the day with Catholic Charities forever and we, we can't do this without that kind of quality partner and of course all of our 
financial partners in the city and all of you. I, it just, it, it does take a village. This isn't something uh, we can do by ourselves. And I'm so delighted that Mercy was able to work with Bernal on this. Um, having that really, uh, that perseverance and that tie to the neighborhood that Bernal brought was a perfect combination of, of all of us together. So thank you all. Very much. Um, I, I want to say that besides the Mercy Housing Management Group, we also have a wonderful group of resident services folks at Mercy Housing that are working really hard here to make this the kind of place um, that where families uh, will thrive. And it, you know, it's not easy living in a city like San Francisco with the cost associated with it. This housing is just such a treasure and a jewel. But the housing is a platform for really what comes next. And what comes next is people really uh, finding their dreams and being able to get the education that they never could have gotten had they not found affordable housing and making the strides that all the rest of us take for granted or many of us take for granted. Um, and, and this is the kind of environment that we need in order to make that happen. So that resident service staff at Mercy Housing is essential to all of this. So thank you all, all of you, you're up there. They're up there in the, in the rafters. You guys do great work and we couldn't do this without you. Um, so, uh, and, and, I would, and I'll say one thing and then I'll stop. And then we can, um, I'd like to invite all of the speakers to come up and we're gonna do the um, official cutting of the ribbon. Um, I know it's a little late, there's a lot of people already living here, um, but we have to do that obligatory thing. I want to say thank you to our, to our sponsors. Um, you know, Mercy Housing is a national organization, and, and, and thank you, um, uh, Supervisor Yi, for, for acknowledging us in the way that you did in your, in your speech. Um, and we're sponsored by eight congregations of Catholic sisters all, from all over the United States. Um, some of them right here in the Bay Area, the Sisters of Mercy. Um, and those women are the most tenacious, far-sighted. Somebody was saying, boy, this took you a long time. I say, yeah, well, you know, when you work around the sisters who've been at this stuff for like 150, 200 years, you kind of start taking the long view. And these kinds of, um, the, the, the years that it takes doesn't seem to be so um, onerous. And, you know, they are really the heart and soul of our organization. They make us, in so many ways, what we are, and they bring us the resources, in many cases, um, some financial, but certainly their long um, commitment to this work in many communities across the United States, they bring that to Mercy Housing. So I wanna, I don't, I don't, I know there are a couple sisters here, Sister Amy is here, and there are, there might be others that I don't see you out in, and the board of directors, we have some board members that are here from um, Mercy Housing California and others. I wanna say thank you in a big way to our board members and our sponsors, because without them, we would be, um, we would not exist today, and they, they are really fabulous, so thank you. And with that, I wanna say thank you for everyone for coming. Thank you for indulging me in this way and being able to come up and say hello. You know, as I said, I don't get to do this very often. Um, I really uh, appreciate the chance. There will be tours. There will also be, um, I think, a little lunch downstairs, um, but before, and so those of you who um, want to do that, feel free, and I would love to have all the speakers come up now so that we can take a photo, and thank you very much for being here.